Hello, it's William Bell. Welcome to the All Things Fulfilled YouTube channel. And uh, again, we're delighted to have the opportunity to uh, share with you another study on the Word of God and on the subject of Bible prophecy. At any rate, today we're going to look at the seventh chapter of Ezekiel. And the reason we will do this is for about five or six uh, objectives, all right? Our first objective is to look at the use of time when it comes down to Bible prophecy uh, and how God uses time. And while we're doing this, what we want to do is answer the question of whether God speaks about time in God's language or does he use our language to talk about time? In other words, should we understand his message about uh, near, at hand, drawing near, etc., and coming? Or is here to refer to something in his mind that could be eons and eons, or was he using it from the perspective that we would understand? Secondly, we want to compare that with New Testament usage to see if we can find similar statements in the New Testament and determine whether or not they have the same connotation as the use of those same words in the Old Covenant. Thirdly, we want to see how he describes the day of judgment. And again, uh, the day of trouble, uh, the kind of language that's used. Number four, uh, we have a reference to the use of the Gentiles. What we commonly know as the times of the Gentiles. And so we're going to look at that a little bit in the text. Um, the fact that when God's people are being destroyed, it is a matter of shame, humiliation, and contempt. And we're going to compare that just, you know, a little. And then the last thing we're going to do is, and these may not come in the order that I've mentioned them. We just want you to know what the objectives are for the video. Uh, we're going to talk about how God uses these events in the natural realm to teach and to demonstrate that he is the Lord. In other words, that it is his presence that is involved. It is his power that is involved. And it is uh, how God is manifesting himself, though they don't see him. Yet, the judgment that he brings is evidence that he is acting among them and that we should draw from that the same presence of God and the same way God acts when we look at judgment in the New Testament. All right, so there are the objectives laid out. Let's get started. Ezekiel chapter 7. Now, in Ezekiel chapter 7, the Bible says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, and I'm going to be covering this chapter very, very quickly. And you, son of man, thus says the Lord God to the land of Israel, an end. So here's the word end being used. But we want you to understand that it's not the end of time. It is an end within time. But the Bible uses it in the same way in the New Testament. For example, he will say, He who endures to the end. Or then comes the end, Matthew 24, 13, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Again, in Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the nations and all the inhabitable earth, and then the end will come. So here we are, back in the day of Ezekiel, when he's prophesying concerning the destruction of the temple by Nebuchadnezzar, he is saying, now an end has come. Verse 3, uh, also notice the language, the end has come upon the four corners of the land. So that's the equivalent of saying the four winds. Then he says, now the end has come upon you, verse 3, and I will send my anger against you. So this is God's wrath. He is angry against them. And he says, I will judge you according to your ways. I, and I will repay you for all your abominations. Now we have the language of repaying them, which is God taking vengeance on them. 
such as is taught in Deuteronomy 32 and verse 35, also in verse 41 and verse 33, uh, 43. You should go back and take a look at those passages in the New Testament. He will say, for example, in Romans chapter 12, and I think it's verse 19, but he says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Again, in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30, he talks about vengeance is mine, and quotes the same passage from Deuteronomy 32 and verse uh, 35, 41, and 43, as I mentioned. You also have a reference to uh, the time of vengeance in Luke chapter 21, verse 22. Uh, when Jerusalem is surrounded by armies in the first century by the Romans, he says, for these are the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And uh, yes, that was Romans 12, 19. I was just double checking that. But in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verses 20 and 21, he talks about God will avenge his people. And so uh, this language in Ezekiel 7 and verse 3 is speaking of the destruction of the temple back uh, in the 6th century BC by Nebuchadnezzar. And he says, now the end has come upon you and I will send my anger against you. I will judge you according to your ways. I got a light bulb that's blinking up here that I need to change. All right, and then he says, and I will repay you for all your abominations. So notice, it was Israel who had committed the abominations. If you go over to the eighth chapter of the uh, book of Ezekiel, you will see where he enumerates the abominations that Israel had committed, which caused this judgment to come upon them at that particular time. Uh, the same way in Matthew 24, when the Bible talks about uh, the abominations that were being committed that caused the Romans to come against them. All right, then he says in verse eight, my, uh, verse four, my eye will not spare you, nor will I have pity, but I will repay your ways and your abominations will be in your midst. Now watch this phrase, then you shall know that I am the Lord. So he tells them at that point, then you will know that I am the Lord. When he brings this judgment upon them, when he does these things, then they will know. Because see, all this time before, they were disregarding him. All this time before, they were worshiping idols. All this time before, through their conduct and through their behavior, they were acting as though there was no God, that the true and living God was not among them. So he says, I'm gonna do something that's gonna demonstrate that my presence is among you, and I'm gonna bring judgment on you for all of your abominations. Verse five, thus says the Lord God, a disaster, a singular disaster, behold, it has come. Now notice, he hasn't brought the judgment yet, but the judgment is so near it is so um, soon to appear, soon to come, that he speaks of it as though it's already there. It has come. Now, we have statements like that in the New Testament for the judgment upon Jerusalem by the Romans and uh, in 1 Peter chapter 4 and the verse is 17. He says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will the end be of those who do not obey the gospel of Christ? Now, a lot of people put that off uh, into our future, but we have to look at the language. The judgment has come. So just as he spoke of it here with uh, the uh, people in the sixth century BC, he is speaking of it here, uh, speaking of it in the same manner. So we can see how, and that's the purpose of this lesson is to show you how the terms are used. And so then shall you know that I am the Lord. All right, verse five, thus says the Lord God, a disaster, a singular disaster, behold, it has come. An end has come, the end has come, it has dawned for you. Look at the audience relevance. He's not talking about a generation that is beyond that generation who is receiving the message from Ezekiel. He's not talking about something 2,000 years later here. He says, an end has come, the end has come. Now, again, that is referring to that language. So God is not talking about something where he uses language that we can't understand or that language that we have to insert thousands and thousands of years between it before it's fulfilled. No, this was coming in their generation because he said it is coming upon you. Then he says, doom has come to you who dwell in the land. The time has come. He calls it a day of trouble. He says a day of trouble is near. We have many passages in the New Testament that uses the same phrase. And when we present these to uh, men who have been, many of them have been preaching the gospel for a long time, uh, many Bible students who study, 
uh, people in you know various uh, you know religious backgrounds see these terms, but they all take them as though they don't mean what they say. In other words, if the Bible says it's near, they're going to say, well, it doesn't mean near to the people who were then living. It means near in God's time, or it means near in the generation that's going to see it whenever these things happen. And by that, they mean some future generation way off out there um, beyond uh, our day and time. No, this was for them. And we're going to uh, demonstrate that in an upcoming video that uh, follows up from this one. So he says, uh, it, an end has come, verse six, the end has come. It has dawned for you, behold, it has come. Doom has come to you and you who dwell in the land, verse seven, the time has come. Look at how many times he says, the time has come. A day of trouble is near and not of rejoicing in the mountains. In other words, you're not going up on the mountains, offering your sacrifices, uh, eating and drinking and playing, etc. You're not going to do that. This is going to be a time of judgment. And he says, uh, not upon you. Uh, now, there's another temporal word that's used often in the New Testament. The word now in connection with things. Let me give you an example. In Romans chapter 13, uh, when Paul says in verse 11, he says, and do this knowing the time that now is the hour to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day has drawn near, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Look at, he used now in the word twice, he talked about the hour uh, for these things to happen has come, and that the day of salvation was near. So all of these same terms that are used, and yet we don't understand them the way we understand them here in Ezekiel, we clearly refer to them as events that were taking place in that generation and time when the words were spoken. But when we get to the New Testament, we put on a different hat. We turn our glasses around backwards and try to look through them this way or um, throw them away altogether. And we don't understand the same words that are used speaking to uh, the same nation just at a different time. And we don't understand that those words have the same impact. And this is why we're covering this. So he says, upon you I will soon there's the word soon. How many times have we seen that? For example, in the book of Revelation, uh, verse 1, where he says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So he says, these were things shortly to come to pass. And then if you look in the last chapter of the book, in Revelation 22, uh, 6 and uh, 7 and 10, he says, these things are soon to take place. Let me go ahead and give you the particular scripture in Revelation chapter 22 uh, that mentions it. And while I'm pulling this scripture, let me give you another one. And that is Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 37, when he talks about the coming of the Lord. He says, um, and he who is coming will come and there will be no more delay. But here's the way the phrase is rendered in the Greek. He who is coming um, will come in a very, very little while. Some translations will actually render it soon and very soon. That's what the word means. But here in Revelation 22, uh, 6 and um, verse 7, again, he says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. And I think the verse I had in mind was the one that I gave you from Hebrews 10 and verse 37 that says, In a very, very little while, or soon and very soon, he who is coming will come and will not delay. So in verse eight, now upon you, I will soon pour out my fury and spend my anger upon you. I will judge you according to your ways and I will repay you for all your abominations. There is that uh, concept that he's going to repay them. Now, when he says, I'm gonna do it according to your ways, that's like Matthew 16, 27 and 28, when he says, for the son of man is about to come in the glory of his father with his holy angels. And then he will reward or repay everyone according to his works. Now I use the word about because that's what's in the original language. It's the word mellow. He is about to judge the living and the dead, or he was about to come in the glory of his father with his angels. 
uh, to give everyone according to his works. And then he says, assuredly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not die till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So you can see how the language is the same language. If we would just study it in the Old Testament, we will see that to be true in the New Testament. Then he says, my eye will not spare, verse 9, nor will I have pity. I will repay you according to your ways, and your abominations will be in your midst. Watch this language, and we're going to stop the video here because I don't want to do a long video. I know that some people get exasperated over those long videos. So we're going to end it here, but I'm going to come back in another video, and so you can just watch the next video. But watch. He says, then you shall know that I am the Lord who strikes. There it is. They couldn't see God. That's why they were doing all the other things that they were doing. If we had a concept that God's presence is always in our midst, if we are his people, then we should act accordingly. We should conduct ourselves accordingly. But because they couldn't see him and because a lot of people can't see him today, they think he doesn't exist. They think he isn't around. They think he has no control or influence in the world today. And they don't realize why, you know, certain things come upon them uh, because of their refusal to acknowledge the true and living God, the only God of the universe. So, so far, what we've looked at is we've talked a little bit about time, but we're not done because there are more passages and we're going to continue those in the upcoming video. Uh, we looked at how he's using these time words. We shared a little bit about the similarity of the New Testament usage, and we see how he describes the day of judgment as a day of trouble, as a day that was soon to come, etc. And uh, we haven't talked about the times of the Gentiles, so we'll talk about that a little bit. But we also talked about the phrase, then you shall know that I am the Lord. He used it twice in the chapter to demonstrate that his presence was among them. How? Through the events that were taking place. Not by their seeing him literally with their eyes, but he says, here is how I'm going to manifest myself among you. And, uh, and then we'll, in the next video, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the concept of shame and dishonor as it relates to what took place concerning them. Well, that's the video, and I hope that it helps you a little bit that you use these videos to further study and apply them in the New Testament when you're looking at these passages, these same words being used in the New Testament, because people are, they get upset, they get angry, they uh, go into just a mode of disbelief and refusal to accept these words when they're used in the New Testament, because of the subject matter that they're connected to. But they mean the same in both of them. So with that, I want to encourage you once again, subscribe to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button, press the bell, ring my bell, so that you'll get notifications every time we release a video. Also visit our website at allthingsfulfilled.com. Tune in to our KWAM broadcast 990 or 107.9 FM on Sunday mornings. You can also catch that live on Facebook via video and uh, because we're live in the studio. And check us out on our cable TV network, uh, the now network org. You can listen live at 6.30 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern Time, and there are also additional channels that we will place where you can watch it on your, uh, on your television. With that, I'm William Bell. You have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.